Today's video is going to be a more dark topic and subject. It's about childhood trauma, childhood abuse, and this is by no means a cry for help. I just want to educate you on how it's affecting your life, how you can process it a little bit better, and how to do the work to fix it, like I've done. So, I've, I've always said I'm never going to lie to you on this channel. I'll be open and say that I was extremely, extremely abused by my parents growing up, like verbally, mentally, physically. I'll probably make another video about the physical abuse, but the verbal is what hurt the most. And the way that they show their love to me affects, and this goes for all of you guys, most people have been abused and most people don't know that the way they show their love to their partners and their relationships, 95% of the time is based on how their parents showed them love. Like you learn from your parents how to show your partner love. Is it in a healthy way or is it in a toxic way? Like really analyze like, like did you grow up seeing your parents hugging and kissing and saying things like I love you and I care about you, doing things to really help each other out or were they just married and then lived in the same house? I've been reading a book called How to Do the Work by Dr. Nicole Lipera. Extremely recommend it. But what she taught me is there's three types of ways that you show your love. There's three types of people when it comes to how they're affected by childhood trauma. The first one is the anxious type. If you're the anxious type, then you show your love. You're very anxious. You're constantly worried about what your partner's doing and where they are. You think they're cheating on you. You just have high anxiety when it comes to relationships. The second one is which is the one that I am, which is avoidant which intimacy like scares avoidant people because they're not used to getting intimacy. And and it's pretty much because their parents weren't intimate with each other and slash or they weren't intimate with you. And they didn't hug you enough and uh, kiss you enough and tell them things like, I love you. You like even now, like, I won't lie to you. Like, it feels weird when I say, like, I love you to my parents. Like, right now I'm over it because I'm educated and I say it. But... For them, like, I still know it's weird. It's a weird thing for them to say. Like, it's almost like they're not used to saying it. Because they're not. They didn't say it a lot growing up. And the third type is secure. Secure people make up about 40% of the population. They grew up experiencing secure love from their parents. Their parents show them love in a healthy way that's not toxic and not hurtful. And these people tend to do the best in relationships. So pretty much if you're secure, you're going to mostly attract other people who are secure. If you're anxious, you're going to attract other people who are anxious, so on, so forth. And what I've been doing is I've been trying to kind of imitate what the secure people do to become more like the secure people. And so I've been trying to show my, my love in a more healthy way in the relationships I've had recently. And the last type is people who are both anxious and avoidant. That makes up like 5% of the population, but pretty much you're anxious and you're avoidant. But guys, childhood trauma is such a huge problem. It's like, and it's like you can't blame your parents for it. You really can't. How they show their love to you is what they learned from their parents. If they learned how to be anxious or avoidant with you, then you're going to learn from them. And the cycle continues, but it's up to you to break the cycle. You have to break the cycle. You have to say, okay, I'm going to be secure in my relationships. I'm going to tell my partner I love her or I love him. I'm going to do things that are consistent with someone who is mentally healthy and secure. I tend to be extremely avoidant in my relationships. It's like whenever my partner tries to get close to me, my natural instinct is to pull back or to um, avoid that level of intimacy. I don't like them knowing too much about me because that requires vulnerability. Just something that I learned is dangerous from my childhood. I couldn't be vulnerable to my parents because they would take advantage of that. So I've noticed that usually my natural response is to keep my partner at a distance and to keep them in the dark about a lot of things. And pretty much intimacy is something that scares me like I don't want to I don't want to get intimate with a girl on a very emotional level because I'm not used to that it's crazy how much this this stuff affects you guys it's like even now like a girl will tell me something like really nice about me um give me like a like a huge compliment 
and my natural instinct is literally to like get defensive like oh like she wants something from me like what does she want from me i need to be careful around her like why like why is that my response i should just be like okay thank you you know just accept the compliment and be like wow like this person really likes this characteristic of me but no for me it's more like naturally i get defensive and i like go in a shell a little bit guys this topic is like no one wants to talk about this like no one wants to realize that this is a huge problem in our society mental health is like the number one reason why you're not um accomplishing the amount of work that you want to accomplish you want to know the reason why you're not doing the um, the right amount of work that you want to it's because your mental health's fucked up you gotta fix your mental health first that should be goal number one is fix your mental health once you do that like once you take up things like journaling you get a counselor i don't mean like you like you don't have to get a therapist so you can find one on like fiverr or coursera apps like this you can book a therapist for not that much someone to just talk to right or just have like a close friend that you can literally just like not a work friend, but a close friend that you can just talk to about this really uncomfortable, messed up topic that we have in our head. Once you fix your mental health, once you do the work and you realize what trauma is lingering from your childhood, it's like you can focus on your work because you don't have it in the back of your head anymore. A lot of modern women also unfortunately suffer from mental health issues and a lot of them like, I'm sure you've heard of, like, daddy issues and things like that. Literally, all that is is they didn't receive the correct amount of love or the healthy amount of love from their fathers, so they, they subconsciously seek male validation. Like, if you've noticed, like, women that have, like, a strong relationship with their fathers, they never, they never act like sluts, do they? Because they have a strong man at home who taught them the right way and showed them love the right way so they don't need outside male validation and had it in their father ever since they were little girls and this is the way that you have to raise your daughter we can break this chain this does not have to continue but you have to be the one to put in the work i hope i've provided some kind of value in this video if you like it like the video let's keep working hard for a better tomorrow